Uh, we're gonna start off laughing. Hey, 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 hey. Hello, forget about it. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's Woman of the Stars, and we got Terry Smith, hey, Jonathan Bailey. Hello, everybody. And today, my joy is to bring you Amber Hudson, who I want to say like a web designer to the stars, (laughs) (laughs) the galactic stars, that is. Mm. And um, man, you you do a lot of things, right? You provide a lot of services because not only are you teaching people how to do it themselves, but you also do it. Yeah, yeah. So tell us what you do, girl. We want to be like this. Yeah. So before (laughs) we we hit record, Terry did ask me where my spiritual journey started. So I'm going to start there because it all kind of comes together uh, full form at the end. Um, Not at the end. We're still in it. But (laughs) Um, so my dog passed away probably about um, almost a couple years now. And that kind of was like, you know, I know a lot of other people, especially that experience spiritual awakenings in their life is usually are centered around life or death kind of situations and, or rebirth and death. Um, and I just, everything started dominoing in effect after that. It started speeding up, you know, once you start, I feel like once I started opening up my conscious more, uh, it started speeding up. I needed to learn all the things because <laughs> I just, um, anything I'm passionate about or feel great about, I just want to dive right in. So I was at a point in my entrepreneurial journey where I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go from there. I was working with clients that, um, you know, I just could feel their emotions and I felt that their heart was not in their business. And it's like, I didn't see it then, but I realized after in reflection that why would I put my heart in your business if you don't have your own heart in it? So that's um, that's when something shifted and I knew something had to change. And what really changed everything um, that I should have done five years ago when I started in the online space is get a mentor or a coach, Um, whether that be, you know, I, (laughs) I had a dream program that I was a part of. Um, You got business coaching and you also got a spiritual life coach or the coach I got was a spiritual life coach because I'm a spiritual person. So um, there are non-spiritual people in the group, I would assume too. But, um, but yeah, so it was like the best of both worlds. It was like exactly what I needed. I needed that spiritual support. Um, and opening to the realm, I knew that I needed to get in the rooms of the people I wanted to surround myself with, which are heart-based people, heart-centered entrepreneurs. And, um, you know, I didn't, I, even a year ago, I thought I didn't really know anyone that was spiritual. And now it's like, I realize a lot of my friends, you know, have awakened in the process or have been spiritual and just you know weren't like hey I'm a spiritual person you know (laughs) when you start to become spiritual for me it felt like you start oh yeah okay yeah you're on my level you're you're vibrating on my level like you just know sometimes when you meet people and uh then I that's when I realized I needed to work with soul line clients that people that are on the same level as me that have their heart in their business And ever since I started working with clients at that, it's just, um, um, along with the mindset work that I did, I feel like that was a big piece of it too. But yeah, there was a lot of puzzle pieces I had to put together to really get where I'm at now. And, you know, I'm still definitely not done (laughs) with everything, but yeah, I do a lot of things too. So, um, I'm getting pulled into some healing work. So I know that I'll be going into that work. I'm trying to embrace the now and I'm still a web designer now. (laughs) So um, I'm trying to stay focused um, on what I need to do. But right now I'm offering um, 
web design. So I have like custom web design packages. I have a, uh, what I worked on last year was this program. I'm calling it my signature program. It's called the Soul Essence. And, or not the Soul Essence. Maybe that's what it needs to be. Essence Unveiled. And what it is, is um, I do brand strategy and web design. And I do it for who I love working with best are light workers of the world that are here to, you know, help others along their journey as well. And um, during this process, a lot of my clients have said they feel heard um, because we're focusing on them. And we're first, there's three things to your brand. There is your story, which none of your stories are definitely going to be the same, right? That's what, like, definitely what makes us unique, what makes Erica not like Oprah and better than Oprah, I think. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then you have your, uh, your brand strategy. So what, how do you want to be perceived by your audience, your target audience, your ideal clients? I say clients, this could be customers too, products, services. It's all the same kind of principles around it. So how do you want to be perceived by others? And there's, you know, nothing wrong with wanting to be perceived in a certain way. Um, it could be trustworthy. It could be fun. And like Erica, you know, I, I always see you with all kinds of colors going on. So <laughs> I see like words of fun and like exciting and, you know, so that's what your brand brings to you. Um, and then you have your aesthetics your visual communication element. So how do you want them to feel? Well, that's where my magic starts to come in. I'm taking your vision and manifesting it into a visual format into the digital world. And once I put it, well, that's taken a long time to be even be able to say this in words, <laughs> like what exactly I do. But, uh, but yeah, it's really been so fulfilling just helping people, um, especially with like light workers, especially like you want, you are so driven and so ready to like get your business going and to serve. And it's always the tech that's in the problem and the learning curve, you know, I went through that <laughs> learning curve. <laughs> And, but I, one thing is that like, I don't like in the marketing world is, um, you know, we need to empower our entrepreneurs to be able to manage their own businesses. Not, not saying you need to manage your business forever. Hopefully you can scale and get a VA and like hire a team eventually if you grow that big, you know, um, if you want to grow that big, some people don't want to grow that big. And I've learned to accept that too. Um, but yeah, uh, just empowering people, educating them on how to run your own business online, you know, not just the web design. That's what's um, been part of my journey as well is like, I'll start client relationships with the website, but they realize I have all this branding and marketing knowledge um, that we end up just becoming lifelong friends. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been a wonderful journey so far and um I still love doing this web design. I don't think I'll ever not do it, but I do feel like I'm getting called. Um, I actually had a very intuitive friend say that I'm um, an activated healer in this world, and I'm still digesting that because that was just two days ago, <laughs> and I'm having a session with her tonight, um, so maybe I'll have some more answers, but um, that's kind of um, so... Yeah, so going into that, I kind of want to hear your guys' perspective on, like, that activation period. Because is that how you felt like it was as a, um, a light worker in the world? You know, and I know it's probably going to look different for all three of you, too. I would say this. There's just, as you live and you grow and you just kind of know, like, something's not right or something is different and you maintain like this different perspective and kind of feel like, why don't I fit in sometimes? And um, I would just notice things 
Like I could say, I could go all the way back to the first time I saw Fight Club. And remember, he's talking about spirit animals and they give like these little hints and clues. And so along your journey, you hear certain things and you're like, that sounds like that could be true. You know what I mean? Like these little thoughts that that, that come forward. Um, it's, it's hard to explain. And then I, I know for me, I was in the military and I got out wow. and I knew that something was wrong with my stomach. And I said, something is growing inside me. So I'm listening to my voice and it's telling me that, but I, I know a regular doctor can't fix it. So then I go to a, a naturopathic doctor and she teaches me kin kinesiology, right? She does the test, the muscle test, and, and she identifies I got E. coli in my stomach, right? And then that's like one more thing where I'm like, oh, look, in our body energy tells the truth and our body knows more about us than our mind does, right? Mm -hmm. And our mind and body can communicate separately. So there was just these little things and then where I'm, I meet people who do tarot and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, you know? And then I move along and I finally meet and then 2020 happens and it's like, ah, oh my God, <laughs> something really isn't right. I knew it wasn't right all the time. <laughs> and then I just got inundated with people who were into truth and they were into different truth than all the truth that was being told in public. And I just enter into a, like a whole different world and then it starts just unfolding, unfolding, unfolding. But then I could say, I always knew I was different because I used to dream yeah. about flying when I was little and I didn't feel like I belonged here. And I used to think that I had powers and I used to go through the woods looking for fairies and dragons and little <gasps> things. I'd be like, Oh my God, if I see some grass and some wood and some moss, I'm following the water wherever I'm at. I'm really like following this water down into the woods. Very dangerous for a little kid. But I mean, it was like this thing where you're, you were always doing it, but you didn't know you were doing it. You were feeling it, but you didn't know what it was that you were feeling. And then one day it's, you know, like smack. Yeah. It's in your face. How I feel like it was. So Terry. Well, my journey started out quite a few years ago, but, um, you know, so what Erica is saying, exactly, I was like that as a kid, but for me, it was, it hit me in the face. My daughter passed away uh, about 25 years ago, but after she died, she was talking to me all the time and she sent me on these, through these, through these little journeys and, and I connected with a uh, a wonderful woman who became my mentor and she uh she was uh, a quote a psychic but but she's also a um um a healer and uh traditional medicine i'm up in canada so she taught me a lot of info uh, not she taught me i remembered she she encouraged me to remember things and to connect with that that aspect and so the journey was one of 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 exploring Right. So I would explore one thing and it was like, OK, well, I like that part, but I don't feel like I that that I have to hold on to that. So it's always been just flowing to where I'm being brought. My spirit brings me to that. And so as I've done that, I've um, unwrapped my gifts. And when it comes to healing, it's like, OK, well, what I did, you know, 15 years ago, I incorporate that to what I do now. But what I did 15 years ago isn't what I do now, but I bring that information. And so it's, it's that constant movement and, and just being able to um, not, not just anchor to one, one way of doing this is always being open to what the higher realm is going to provide for you. Yeah. Adapt to change. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Yeah. And Jonathan, uh, so for me, uh, yeah, as a child, I was always, I was always, you know, I was always pretending to be uh, some sort of superhero, Superman. This, is, but thinking that I can literally do stuff, and and um, and, and knowing that I could, and then I also would have, um, you know, I was having like contact. I would get up, sleepwalk in the in the middle of the night, and go turn on like. Uh, the TV, you know, those old school tube TVs that had the the snow that I would just sit there and I just sit there be talking through it. And uh, my sister would 
I spooked my sister a few times like that. But um, and and I was talking about doing a lot of of cleansing of energies, and they kind of I I look from now is that that's where I was kind of placed within the space, and I I had a lot of energies that were around me um, and my family that were were needing to be brought to light. Um, and that's still kind of me processing it now um, in this past year or this past few months. So, um, but, and then going through, my mom was sick and I was kind of going through a spiral um, when I, she was seven when I got sick or when she got sick, sorry. Um, and long story short, so in 2000 and 2002, she passed away. Um, and I was in Quebec and going to school there, playing football. And uh, I had, uh, there was this, this, this angel that was on the bus beside me on the whole way home and she just comforted me. And it was just like, that's not a reg. I just knew she was so much more. And I was always so tethered to like zodiacs and just knowing of the flow of things. Um, just know, just I'd be, you know, out of parties and just know when to leave. Like the voice, the voice would come in so clearly. Wow. Um, and then I would have, there would be like shadows and I had sleep paralysis a couple of times because I used to drink a lot. Um, there was literally me and my friend were walking across the street going to a club and there was a shadow being that peeked around the corner and pretend to have a gun and he peeked back and we ran probably, it was like two or three strides. We passed the building that across from across the street, the angle was so small and it was like probably 50 feet that I passed and there was nothing. There was nothing there. So it was just another thing to really make me, okay, this is, I'm being led to, to process stuff. Um, and then coming into uh, the later years, uh, I was having, you know, had got married and we were in Costa Rica and just the way the spirit worked around in the whole, in the whole, the whole four or five days, we were in rainy season and it did not rain a drop for three days, not three days. And then right after we got married, the very next morning, it poured for the entire time. Like we had other guests that stayed at that place and they poured the entire time they were there. Um, and, you know, then I read that book. Came We started meditation school, but I read the Dr. Eric Pearl Axitonal Alignment book. And... Um, and that was that was the real downloads. Like everything reverberated. I was in a vibrational state, uh, and uh, I I met Terry the first time, and I was like, I told Angela, I'm like, there's more to Terry. I think there's something there's something behind this. But I'm not sure. They're telling me just be patient, do my work. But um, and then sure enough, uh, it came across, came to fruition, and like I think it was about two years later. Um, so it was just really riding the wave of the synchronicities hmm. and, you know, processing stuff when it came across. Yeah. And here we are here now <laughs> and ready wow. to start a website because that's another <laughs> thing. I had another person, I had a fr uh, family member. She's like, oh yeah, uh, I could work on websites and some logo stuff and promoting stuff. And this was only like three, four days ago or maybe five days ago. And then it was like the very next day, Eric is like, oh yeah, we booked a point, uh, a session with Amber Hudson about doing uh, uh, websites and everything. And I was like, oh, that's just, you know, another clue, another synchronicity. Like, okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, I, I can do a logo for you. I can do this, do this. So yeah, it's just right. I love away. how it opens the doors. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. my, um, my business name is called Amber Waves Creative. And so that's kind of like my motto, like, um like amber waves I, of gray like the the yeah but like not grain because the grain, grain okay. is not good anymore <laughs> <laughs> not grain but, but uh, yeah a lot of people don't know that reference i guess yeah yeah i guess especially if you're not in america too yeah not like more of an american yeah that like that's this. a national anthem <laughs> right um but i think of like uh it like when I created my brand, I had to rebrand because 
this is actually a lesson I like to share with people. Um, I realized uh, my, my old business name was Elevate Studio. Now, if you could imagine Elevate Studio, there's probably a lot of names out there that are probably the same. <laughs> Um, I did look into it a little bit. There weren't like any marketing or web design kind of agency. So I went with it, but then I just kind of outgrew that brand. And that's another thing too, is like when you're feeling stagnant, like in your kind of business, it might be because you need to pivot on your brand strategy or your website or, you know, even for beginners, like get a website, you know, I know that's a big step. I used to think it was crazy for people to have a business or to be doing like offering services without a website. And then, um, going into the spiritual and like the coaching world, I realized there are so many relationships going on behind closed doors. I mean, it's great, but I, it like gave me that new like possibility. I'm like, there are like a million ways to do business. <laughs> And I say, like, nothing is, like, the right or wrong way. And, Jonathan, it sounds like you have been led by your intuition so much. And that's kind of what I've tried to learn and instill in others is let your intuition guide you just like you do in your life, you know, like, let it guide you in your business as well. But um, So this was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Well, one thing I wanted to point out is the fact that you you brought up the importance of having a coach in your own life. And I noticed I there's people maybe that aren't in business, but in the in the spiritual world that are not really seeing that having those group sessions and coaching sessions. I don't know if you did group coaching, like where you all put together. Program. I've done that every year for the last three years, where I participated in at least an eight week program with other women or other people, and and help you along the journey because we got blind spots, right? And uh, I think a lot of people want to tackle it on their own, but I see a lot of value in having coach coaches and having groups yeah. instead of just being, uh, it is, to me, it's not a matter of giving up your sovereignty, especially as long as you have a teacher who doesn't want you to follow them and they're not making up a bunch of rules for you, but it's this thing where you check in and you say, hey, what adventure did you have this week and how did it affect you? And maybe we need to do some clearings or let's talk to your inner child or something like that. But how, how did your coaching, how did that coaching really affect you? You think or uh, something that you revisit along the way or. Yeah. So I actually, um, I actually just finished up with, so they do rounds. So a group program, you know, is usually for, it was for three months. And then um, I have lifetime access. So I went through the round again last fall and just finished it um, up. But I didn't need them as much. So that was awesome. Um, I thought that was really great. But, um, Oh, what was I going to say? I think I manifested the program into my life right when I needed it most. And it was exactly what I needed. Like, it was kind of insane how on point, you know, I had um, the main business coach. She taught, like, all the business stuff and really that. And, like, to be quite honest, um, I tried not to say this in a conceited way. I don't want it to come off that way. But, like, I already knew all that stuff. Well, you'd already been in business. I, needed, for I needed the coaching, like spiritual life coaching part. Yeah. That that's where I got the most value from because that's what I needed most, you know. But the business program, it certainly did like it helped me open possibilities, like what Terry, I love, you know, just opening your heart to the possibilities to find solutions in life, you know. Um, that opened me up there and just another way to do business. Um, what's worked for her, what hasn't worked for her. She doesn't, you know, like what you were saying, Erica, like doesn't pressure you to follow her route, you know, kind of find your own tune and kind of thing like that. So I have learned so much from her. Um, and it's really, I've thought about this before, like, especially people that aren't so much involved in the online business world yet. How do you know if a program's right for you, you know? Um, so a clear, a clear sales page should answer that. It should clearly say, this is for you if, this is not a, for you if 
you don't meet this criteria. And, you know, us um, as spiritual people um, who have done at least a little bit of work on ourselves, we should know how to express our needs, you know? So that's what I come back to as far as like that goes. But um, you're saying amazing stuff. <laughs> It's like, crap. It wasn't <laughs> it was always like this. And, and having always. a clear description. And I think some, I now see, because I, I wanted to discuss some of the things that people should be looking for. If you're looking for someone to help you with your business and your website, there's some things that they need to have on hand. And so I've approached groups of people where, because I've been in life insurance business for so long, like I'm, I'm structured in a way where I'm like, you do need a headshot. And I meet people who are like, I don't have a headshot. And you're, and you're like, but you need a website. They don't have a business phone or like a message phone, or they don't have a, you know, they don't have a business card or anything like that. And, and then sometimes they don't define clearly what it is, the services that they offer. And so as a client, what should people be looking for when they're looking at someone's website? But as an entrepreneur, what are some of the failures that you're seeing as like, oh, I'm shocked you don't have it. You know, what, how can you talk about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind, especially with us, um, with the unplugged uh, healers of the world, the people that are very disconnected from the online world that I tend to forget about. Um, I had a conversation with someone uh, living at a transformational center in Ecuador last week. Oh. And so it gave, I knew she was the pillar of like, remember Amber, there's these people that are out there too that need help, you know? Um, and I just had a five minute conversation with her and provided so much value for her. And I just felt so fulfilled. And I'm like, um, you know, I wanted to keep going, you know, so also not trying to do too much people pleasing. Um, that's been a personal journey of mine too. And I'm getting sidetracked. What was the question again? <laughs> well, a a as entrepreneurs, what are oh. the basic things that we should have? Cause I know if, if I come to you, I have to bring you some, some items, hopefully some photos or things that go on my site. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. People do because this is what I try to tell people is people do business with you because they like you. And if they don't see you, they don't hear you, they don't know you. So yeah. I've always approached people like I'll take an interview with you and say, Well, now if I get to talk to Amber and you hear her conversation or her lingo, you're like, I like her. Now I know yeah. her. I'll do business with her because I feel like I know her. Exactly. Yeah. So for you as as other healers and people in the light worker community that you're working with, what are some things that they should be bringing to you or should be having ready? Yeah. So a couple things I wrote it down so I don't get sidetracked. I've learned how that's my brain works. So um, the first thing for anybody is to show up online, no matter what the platform, it doesn't matter where it is. Just show up. Don't overthink it. And just show up as, you know, I don't really like using authentic self, but your authentic self. I just feel like um, authentic self is getting very um, overused lately, but that might be just in my world. <laughs> I think um, it's cool that you said that, though, because I want to point that phrase out. You said don't overthink it because what happens is the paralysis of analysis kicks in because people are like, well, I don't know what my name is and I don't know what the logo is. And so they won't start anything at all because they want to take all these months of preparation. And um, it's very important. So people never get started because they, they're they waiting for perfection and say, what did they say? Good is this. Too much brain dump. Yeah. You know, every thought is a string of energy and that's taking up too much space in the brain. Yeah. And I am the queen of analysis paralysis. I really shouldn't say that out loud, but like I still fight it to this day. And, um, you know, I feel like that's my life journey is fighting the anxiety, the analysis paralysis. But that's where coaching and mentors come in to get you out of that 
you know, or, right. you know, or energy work, getting out of that stagnancy kind of thing. Um, but, but showing up online is the most important part. It doesn't matter what channel, just wherever you can express your thoughts and things like that. And then for a website, so say you need a website and you have no idea where to go or, you know, um, you don't know what you need. You don't know what the first steps are. Um, if you're going to look for a designer, you want to think about your photos and images for your website, just photos of you, of what you do, um, any kind of photos you can do. And it doesn't have to be professional photography. This is one thing I got caught up in for so long is that I can't use like pictures on my phone. Like that's not good quality enough for the website. No, it like, uh, if you don't have your face on your website, then how are they supposed to build that trust? So you definitely take a photo. I tell people, if you don't have any photography, just take a picture of your phone, like with your phone. Like when you feel like your best self, take a photo of yourself. And then the magic of designers that can come in is that I can go in and like Photoshop a little bit of it. Usually I don't have to do much because they're all beautiful the way they are, but you know, just to make them feel like it's going to be a good picture. Then you need all your copywriting, all your text on your, um, stuff. Now, some web design services include this, but it's a totally different service. Now, I know what I'm good at and what I'm definitely not good at, and that is copywriting. I might be good at writing, but copywriting is a skill that is literally either you're a good writer or it's you need training on it. It's really a, like a, a formula. Um, I'm going to stop you there because for some okay. people, like they're thinking copyright is like the legal copyright copyright is mm. the words that you put together how you put them together to express yourself clearly so that people can get the images of what what it is you do and what you're providing you know it's the language that you're going to use and so these I are this is really important because it's yeah it's like hitting on neuro linguistics what thoughts are triggered by the words so words are important so I, it, reminds, it reminds me of that movie um oh the, oh goodness where they're looking for that bible they're looking for the copy of the bible mm -hmm. what's that movie mm -hmm. the book of eli uh, so the main thing he's saying in the book of Eli is the words. I need the words because the words move the people. And so copyright, you want the right words to move people to connect with you. Yeah. And so I'll be quiet. There you go. No, I got no, strong, feelings. I got strong feelings about this. <laughs> I have, um, I always do have to explain copywriting. Um, right. So I'm glad you brought that up. And I really like the way you uh, defined copywriting. <laughs> so. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. And then, so like, you can also find resources. Say you can't c hire a copywriter. I've, I've never hired a copywriter for my own copy to this day. Um, if my client wants it, I have a great relationship with this awesome um, girl that, this awesome woman that does copywriting. And from a spiritually minded oh, perspective too, um, so I, I refer out on that. I know I'm not good at copy. I could if I could spend a month it's on it. It's time consuming. It's time consuming. <laughs> too much brain gunk uh, going on it. I realized it took too much space in my brain. So I'm like, that needs to be done or outsourced. But then through my journey, I like last uh, year, I created a website content planning workbook which basically mm -hmm. provides the, it, it's like journal prompts is what I feel like it is because I've done this for myself. And so um, I go through these uh, copywriting prompts and the trick is, here's the, here's the best hack right here. Open up Google Docs, click tools, voice typing, and then literally speak it into the ether and have Google do the writing for you. So that's another hack. You know, you don't have to sit there and type it out. You can literally speak it into the that's universe. Absolutely fabulous. And yeah. so this whole thing, even the process of talking to you, even the idea that you're not good or like the 
guru on copyright, but the idea that you outsource, know what you know, know what you don't know, and know who knows what you don't know. You don't have to do it all. And I think that's why people end up being so far behind on their projects because they want to try to take it all and put it all on their own plate. You know, when you know you don't like spaghetti, don't eat spaghetti. You know, <laughs> pass your spaghetti to somebody else. You know, just stick with the things that you know that you're good at. And it's very um, hard sometimes, when, especially when you know how to do a lot of things, stick with the things that you do best. Yeah. yeah. Try I, to I, was, the rest. Yeah. That's oh, I just made up epitome a epitome of my career. Is like, yeah. I had to learn how to stay in my own lane. Like, yeah, I know how to do all these things, but am I great at it? Like, that's why people niche down. And I'm a multi-passionate um, entrepreneur. So I don't say you need to niche down. One thing I've learned from my business coach actually is you don't need to niche down you and your business. You need to niche down your offer. So what a specific offer that you're offering, who is that perfect for? Because like my one-on-one -on -one full-blown signature experience, the, the essence unveiled that's a $4,000 investment at least. And that's, you know, that's not for everyone. And I realized I needed to meet people at different levels. So that's why I wanted to teach people how to build their own website based off a template that I built. Or um, I have VIP days, which are great for like smaller scale websites, or I have half days for like even just a sales page or anything like that. So I've tried to meet people at every phase in their business because I don't really like it when I can't help someone or don't have a service that would, you know, offer them. So obviously you come back to the client avatar of my website templates. The perfect person for that person is going to be completely different than the person in this, the essence unveiled experience. They're going to be, you know, more, um, in their business or it's going to be time, energy, or money. They either got more time or they have more money or whatever it is. <laughs> it's kind of like, that makes sense. Like, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So, so they first, have the investment or they have done their time and made money in their business. So first you said show up online. Then you said, get your photos together. And then third, you said copywriting. And now what? Yeah. So at this point, you were ready to hire a okay. web designer. Yeah. And so another thing I want to touch on too, actually, um, is the difference between a web designer and a web developer. Which mm -hmm. one do you need? What's the difference? So a web developer is the what you visualize a web developer being, like the the nerd, and I'm a nerd, so I'm referring to myself, the nerd at the computer <laughs> typing up all the matrix code, you know, like going at it. And I learned that perspective at first because that's how I got into web development or web design. So I learned eight, uh, like basic web development codes like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, Ooh. which any kind of person doing web design, those are basic. <laughs> A good kind of basic coding skills to learn. Right. Um, but then it kind of evolved from there. And I'm like, I really had to uh, really navigate the online business and marketing world to understand stuff before I could really go forward in my career. Um, so I taught, I learned the coding and then I learned the design aspect. So the design aspect is more of the intuitive strategy behind it. So intuitive strategy, like, literally meaning like it guides you naturally through the website of where they need your main goal. Every website should have one main goal. You can make two to three, but like one top tier goal. Now, as light workers, it's always easy to tap into the feeling. So what's the one feeling you want them to feel after going to your website um, and after your service, that kind of thing? But, um, but yeah, so you're looking for a designer if you are a new entrepreneur, for sure, because you don't need a custom coded website, like not even successful, you know, six, seven figure 
businesses I've seen don't even need those fully coded websites. Those are for like mass scale, like corporate kind of, you know, industry that I am like far from. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, like any kind of website builder, what you really need to focus on is getting a web designer skilled in a platform, not, I really would like not really, um, hire a cheaper designer that says they can build websites in any platform because they really haven't done their work on niching down and focusing on their on who it they're sounds really chaotic doing. right you're, yeah. you're you're on host gator you on wix you on square yeah they should be in a particular place and so when you say platform like wix is one platform mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, good question, Erica. So the platform's best for entrepreneurs like us is I am a Squarespace expert. I'm also a Kajabi expert, but that's more for if you're doing like online courses and um, some other stuff. Um, but Squarespace, Wix, um, really those two is I wouldn't even steer clear out of that. You have like Weebly. I don't even want to say the words actually because I don't want to recommend them. <laughs> Squarespace or Wix will cover you. It has e-commerce functions. Squarespace now has email marketing platform that's actually cheaper than most. Um, they're really, when Squarespace started their company, it was to serve entrepreneurs like us um, for an all-in-one kind of platform. So it has Ooh. an online scheduling um, tool. Now these extra features will be extra. Um, you got me wanting but, to leave HostGator. <laughs> now we can have another talk and see what you truly need in your business but okay going from someone that needs a website and is trying to navigate like all the things like just go to Squarespace or Wix and just try to do it yourself or find a template or find a designer so for me I watched a video on YouTube and I built my website in 2019 and it was pretty hot and sexy but then awesome. but then it needed updates and I was like oh no I don't know I'm what I'm press. doing and I end up like pressing the button and like I got some code stuck in the top of the screen and I'm, I'm like emergency 911 I'm gonna call Amber <laughs> yeah so first <laughs> question here. is it on WordPress yeah, it's WordPress. I think so, it's, it's like I yeah. went deep and I went in maybe way deeper than I could have, should have. Maybe at that time I had all that time, right? Because I was just building a site and I had this time and I was one by one just following instructions. But I don't have that type of energy anymore. I did the same thing. I tried to, I mean, I know WordPress. I don't build on it. And because that's more of like made for like custom like yeah. coding. And you can find templates and stuff, but here's what runs into the problem with everyone. And Erica, it's so aligned. Everything you bring up, it just flows <laughs> into the conversation. We're all flowing here. Um, but yeah. but uh, the WordPress sites serve good at first. And like, I, I would analyze your business before I would say move away from WordPress because it could be serving you just well. But the maintenance comes into play. And that kind of maintenance is not required on Squarespace um, or, or even Wix, I wouldn't think. Um, so the, it's really just kind of like already done in the back end. They do a lot of the back end um, issues. And Squarespace, I know, has incredible um, support too. Not only resources and guides to teach you in videos, but also like support um that you can reach out, like chat support, or I don't know, people call on the phone for support anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but can yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay, so if you have a website, um, can you migrate it from, you know, from one to the new platform, say to Squarespace? Can you migrate that? that information or is it going to be difficult or are they not going to um, jive together? You know, like have you had any experience with doing that sort of thing? Is that something or is it better to just start all over again? Yeah, that's excellent question. Um, so 
Uh, it first depends on what platform you're coming from. I know Squarespace has, I haven't used it because I would rather manually transfer everything over because if I'm doing a redesign, it's basically a new website um, where I create it on a new account. It doesn't have any of your old images taking up storage space or anything, um, which helps with your website speed. So I clean slate. Um, and then I literally just give you access to the site and transfer ownership and then it's there. But WordPress and maybe Wix has a functionality that you can like import your content in. Mm -hmm. And if you just have like a basic website with no blog or like extensive content, then I would just do it manually because Squarespace is so easy to use, especially they just keep upgrading and upgrading. They they're in it for the long haul. That's for sure. That's what they've proved um, through my career. But um, but then you get blog content or podcasts or stuff like that, where it would make sense to utilize that tool to bring in all those blog posts or um, whatever the content is. But yeah, I personally haven't used it because I would rather um, know what's going on and I don't know. I might get an opportunity to util utilize it in the future, but I know it's there if I need it, but yeah. So one thing I think, because we're talking about uh, the, the hosts, is explaining the difference between the domain name and the host, so people understand the difference between the two. Yeah. yeah. yeah I like to do that question before you even said it. <laughs> Yeah, because because we're getting into the comp the the part now because you're tra talking about transferring from one place to another. Yeah, and that's what makes your question so relevant, Terry, is because it's a yeah. different host. So one person, one host versus another host. How you take your domain over? Yeah. yeah. So this is. I'm just, always... just so you know, I don't have a website, so but I'm I'm just asking no, this. It's all perfect. It's all it's relevant. All, yeah. Yeah. It's all great. Um, so like, I'm going to use your website as an example, Erica, on WordPress. So right. as you can tell, you had to go to HostGator to buy your domain and then you connected it to WordPress, right? When you launched. Right. Yeah. So, um, it can be a lot of different ways. So I just launched this website where we transferred the domain from Weebly to Squarespace. Um, and then now it's hosted in Squarespace and it's all in one. Now, I know I, I sound like a Squarespace fanatic. I don't get money for saying any of this. I just want to make that clear. I just am really, I really do like Squarespace as a website tool. And uh, I really, and I have one on there too that I was about to take over. So this is perfect timing because you're saying that because I had both in the, 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 the um, Squarespace really was easy. And it was like, you can put the thing up to collect money. It was super, super easy. It wasn't anything like what I went through before. Yeah. 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 They actually, oh, there's echoing. Um, they actually just redid their interface. So now it's literally like, um, I used to have to put a lot of code in for customizations, but they've actually helped a lot. Last year, they released um, fluid engine which is irrelevant to you it's basically their drag and drop system within their interface their editing tool um and you can like layer pictures now you used to have to like put custom code in to do that just it's so like they've gotten so good at making it super user friendly and uh that's why i love it so much it's easy to teach on too which may be another reason why i like it um but the domain and the hosting are technically separate unless like so the first website I created was on Squarespace and you just buy the domain through Squarespace you look for it on Squarespace and it's all in one and I thought every website platform was like that five years ago and then realized when I learned about WordPress and I was like thinking I was going to learn WordPress and like build websites on there and quickly was like no I'm not doing that I hate WordPress <laughs> I try not to express that with uh, people with WordPress sites because they do a good job still. But well, it, just gets it is a lot of work because yeah. you're getting all these updates. 
and and their individual type updates. It's not this thing yeah. where you can just hit one update button. It's and what uh, it is, it's the plugins. There's all these plugins. The plugins. But then too, you know, another thing that I don't like is random people calling me because you got a WordPress site. Random people calling you wanting to help you from all over the world. And you're like, why do you have all my information? Yeah, that you can look at all that stuff. Um, so whois.com, you can see the owner domain. So I could go and look up the owner of the domain if it's under your name. Uh. And it has the information there. And then they'll go to your site. And then there's a Chrome extension tool that I use all the time that shows you where your domain is hosted and what your website is hosted on as well. Um, these aren't tools that you need, but like that's how- Well, if you're the one running your site and you forget five years later, like I did, like who you is- got your domain. Ah! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just <laughs> went through all that. <laughs> was, can, can you buy hard. your domain name like permanently? Is there, how do you buy a permanent domain name? Like- or do you just pay for it every year? Like that's yeah. your URL, right? Your URL is yeah, your domain. It's, it's permanent unless you have like a like okay. Um your your domain is permanent when you buy it unless you don't pay that yearly fee, which usually it's about twenty bucks a year for a domain. It's really the website hosting that costs the most. Um but yeah, you have your own domain permanently. Now, there are some cases where you have, like, free websites. So, like, Wix, I know, um, I built a friend's website on a free plan on Wix. So, she didn't have her full domain. She had uh, nameofbusiness.wixsite.com. So, yeah. it's, hosted, it's, like, hosted on their server, but they don't own that domain. And then the same with WordPress. So, sometimes if you use wordpress.org, and not .com or or maybe it's vice versa. There's a word wordpress.org which is like free hosting online, like oh. kind of what I was talking about and then there's wordpress.com or the other one that's like what you have. Like okay. your own domain and your own website and stuff. It's it's wild. I go to host I have Hostgator and it's like a monthly fee, I think. WordPress used to be the the hot the hot platform for websites to be quite honest but now with technology evolving and you know people evolving along with it and learning how to do their own kind of things especially with the all these heart-centered entrepreneurs that are coming in you know my goal is to make them feel empowered to run the show you know to be able to run their show well one thing i notice too when i'm running into people's websites is if you look at it on the laptop it's small you know like the text is too small you can't go in and out like the there's just different ways where you do websites right where it fits the screen right and it flows versus it ends up being almost like a printed piece of paper that doesn't get any bigger yeah. and then like some people's websites they're no good on the phone if you go on the phone it's the text is either too large or too small it doesn't, it doesn't move with the phone. It doesn't. And then, uh, and then there's people having the data not put together properly. So like your, your, your load real slow, your website loads real slow. So is that maybe people aren't doing that as much lately, but I still saw someone else's. They were on a site for, for their podcasts. And I, I was just like, it was an unattractive page. You know what I mean? It was just like the print was tiny and they probably don't even know. Right. A lot of people don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So a lot of people don't even look at that. That's actually, I have a checklist, like a pre-launch checklist. I have to literally like get the brain dopamine to make sure I feel like I got all the points hit the, you know, just making sure everything's good before we launch. And Checking mobile is one of those because <laughs> a mistake I did early on in my journey is not do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so back back in the day before Squarespace had this large update, um, 
whereas now Squarespace making it mobile friendly is literally drag and drop. Whoo, it's so easy. I used to have to do code on mobile friendly. Like that would be, I would build the site and then I would review it on mobile and then enter the snippets of code I need to add to make it visually aesthetic. Um, but now you just drag and drop it and it can look, you know, it's not going to affect anything on the desktop view now. So that's been like a game changer. Um, it's like literally saved me so much time in my design process, like before launching. It's been amazing. Um, and that's another thing like that. That's part of Fluid Engine, that uh, editing tool within Squarespace that they've updated this year, where it's literally like a drag and drop option. So. So people are, that have yeah. websites uh, before, um, probably like J July of last year, you don't even know what Fluid Engine is probably because it's not on your website. But if you, um, you can always press a button and upgrade that. It'll show an upgrade button um, where you can turn Fluid Engine. I'm digressing because it's not relevant, but... <laughs> well, I mean, it is somewhat because yeah, if you some of the people that you're talking to have tried to do it themselves. Yeah. So this is, you know, kind of knowing, are you going to hire somebody? Are you going to try to do this yourself? Or are you going to take Amber's class so she can teach you how to do it the right way the first time? Yeah. So it's <laughs> actually, um, so what I end up doing instead of teaching you how to build it's kind of, I guess, the same concept, just kind of structured differently. So I, I started making templates that I created and then teach them how to customize it because that's so much easier and they can utilize the assets I used on the website or they can put in their own. And then so when you buy a website template for me, you get access to what I call the website mastery toolkit and it shows you you know, all these, there's probably about 15 tutorials in there and it's growing. Um, but now I need to make more templates because I feel like um, what I found a lot of people just want as much done for you as possible. So that's what I'm going to be catering my templates more towards is where you can, I mean, it's pretty much like that now. You literally just go in and swap out your photo for that one and pretty simple. But um. That sounds amazing. I think I'm going to do more focused on um, industries or something. Like this is for like astrologers. This is for, you know, Reiki practitioners. This is because um, it seems like the more specific you get it, the more they want to buy it. But really you have control over all that. Mm -hmm. um, but also when you buy templates through me too, you get the website content planning workbook that helps you go through creating all your content. Yeah. Cause the part I'm not oh, good at helping. I had to change the view. <laughs> so say it again. You get the workbook. Yeah. You get the workbook with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yay guys. Yay. You get <laughs> Come on, Jonathan. Yay. You get the workbook. <laughs> Cause I was already oh, eyeballing. Like she said, workbook. Oh, I need this. <laughs> uh, so in the workbook too, it, um, it has a page where, um, so on each page, I'll go ahead and share what's inside this workbook a little bit too, um, to help with your website planning. Um, you want to figure out first, what pages do you want to have on your website? And that's kind of two layers. So you have your navigation pages, the pages you want to present on your homepage to click on, mm -hmm. and then you have all the pages that aren't displayed on your navigation, which uh, a good example of that would be like a Instagram bio link page, which you could totally do with your website instead of having like a link tree account. Um, Instagram, wait, wait a minute, your bio page? Tell me. Yeah, let me know. show you mine. It's, but I always say that and people get confused. Um, so on my Instagram, I go to my link and so it has your like little bio page uh -huh. with all Ooh, your links nice. and I have like a video overview of my services. So 
this used to be where people would get Linktree account to host that on their Instagram profile. But if you have a website, you can easily just make it a, um, a web, an additional page on your site. So I include that now with all my templates that I create. Ooh. And any kind of website project I create now, it's just kind of like a standard page. Like also you need a privacy policy too. Um, That's I'm going to say on privacy up. and disclaimer. We I'm skipping some parts. Let yeah. me get back to that. Uh, so you got your navigation, <laughs> your navigation on the home page, and then you have all these other pages within it that might not be hooked onto your navigation page. And so another good example of this too is like a sales page that or a landing page. It's like separate. It's like you're just focusing on selling this offer. So that wouldn't be, you know, attached to the navigation menu. I don't know. Um, or another one would be a landing page, which a landing page is more so like um, sign up for this freebie and we'll add you to the email list and you get a freebie. So you go to a landing page. That page doesn't live on the main navigation, but it lives on your site. So that would be an example of... It's kind of a dead-end type page. It's quite, yeah. And these but pages... Will it still have the menu on the side, though? Like, you can still hit menu and go to the regular page and see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Through. The 404 page is another type of page, like a dead-end. Mm -hmm. um, the landing page is like, okay, say you have an opt-in on your website. You're like... Or you share on Instagram. You're like, hey, do you want this free guide? Um, go ahead and go to the link in my bio to get this freebie. Well, that link in the bio goes to the landing page. The landing page is on your website, but it's not in your navigation menu. So people, you know, aren't going to easily find that, but it's not for that purpose. Right. That because sense? if somebody's already regularly visiting your site, they're yeah. not going to go for the freebie offer. That's this is to, this is one thing that's set out to find new people to say, hey, come get this offer and now they've they're on your page you don't yeah. want everybody getting it right they get get them in your realm yeah. you know yeah. get, that way you can um from there you know i'm <laughs> i'm trying to take my own lessons i'm really trying to uh start my email marketing stuff i do a lot of email marketing i just haven't i i'm trying to learn how to take my business and treat it as a client <laughs> so that's been a personal journey of mine um I care deeply about my businesses, uh, about my client's business. Yes. It's like self-care, but like self-care on your business too. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to treat yourself um, like a business owner. Um, that I wanted to bring this up before. It's like sh show up online and treat yourself as a business owner. Just embody that from the get-go. Because I didn't, and I realized that was what it was creating some kind of resistance I didn't know about. Um, personally, but, um, and then, so you go through and other pages on your website that you don't think about, um, that I just include, um, with like web design projects and stuff is a 404 page. So that dead end page that you land on, you're like, oh shit, where'd I go? Um, and on that page, there's a strategy even for that page, guide them back to where they need to go, whether you see your home page or maybe some blog content or wherever you want them to go. Don't leave them hanging on that page. Lead them back. Provide links to link them back to your your website. Is a 404 um, page something you need? 404 page is, there's already, so on Squarespace, there's a um, default page. But I usually like to customize it because, again, there's a strategy. They just have like the dead, like, hey, you hit a dead end, like, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> and you don't have anywhere to go. You don't have anywhere to click. But I always customize those pages, at least by adding a simple link, just one button, one link to get them back onto where they need to go, which is quite common. I mean, uh, dead links, you know, that's kind of like um, maintenance I, I suggest people do is going and that's what testing your website is. Going through, clicking all your links, making their working, all the buttons, all the in-text links, all that kind of stuff. Um, I did yeah. want to ask you this. Is it is it possible to have two URLs but on the same but maintained on the same site? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before we get to that, actually, I wanted to finish up about the privacy policy. I forgot to Ooh, bring up. Um, one thing that people don't also realize is that every single website needs a privacy policy. And that is especially so if you are getting people's information, so their name and email address, that if you don't have a privacy policy, you're actually technically breaking the law. But um, fortunately, there's no, um, I mean, there's people out there that like go and like make sure your website is by law, but <laughs> don't even think about that. I haven't had it happen or anything. So, um, but yeah, you need a privacy policy. I, you can easily go online and find a free template. I usually just have a a placeholder one that I give to my clients because usually they don't have privacy policies on hand either. So um, just a very general that kind of covering all the bases. Um, is it lawyer approved? I don't know. So that's a whole nother thing. And then I do want to also mention terms and conditions. So if you're selling, this is really common for people selling like programs or digital products. You know, when you're like purchasing that product or program or something, they have like a little box and you're like, check the terms and conditions that most people probably wouldn't pull up. Um, I highly recommend always pulling up the terms and conditions before purchasing online. Um, but that's super important too. And honestly, that's the part you really want to have looked by a lawyer. But I understand, you know, that costs money too. So that's kind of hard to reach. But I do have a lawyer, perfect for online entrepreneurs, if you want a recommendation. Um, but you, um, the terms and conditions is very important to have if you're selling digital products and um, really services too, but you might have contracts. This is more like when you go to a checkout screen and you click a little button and it has the terms and conditions right there. Versus- Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Okay, so say it was an eight weeks coaching class and so I've seen this where you took two of the classes and you're like, I, I don't want to do anymore. And the, the lady said, oh, well, I don't prorate. I don't I don't do refunds. I don't do da, 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 da. You signed up for this class. That's it. Is that a part of the terms and conditions? Yep. OK, there you go. Mm -hmm. So that's like your refund policies and your, yep. you know, your satisfaction guarantee type thing. Yeah. I've also um, approached a group where they wanted to plan a, a whole retreat but number one they didn't want to come up with a schedule and everybody wanted to like bust out all their superpowers at once and I was like no you got to have a name of the retreat you got to have a theme of the retreat and then there should be just specific things that you want to offer so that if someone's not satisfied you can say well I gave you this 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 and this mm -hmm. or else people will be like hey I want a refund because you have to define your terms right yeah that's so good. I actually did a retreat training and I learned a lot of stuff as far as holding space, but I realized most of it was like marketing and business knowledge that she was teaching. I was like, wow. So you're just basically just teaching business and marketing principles, but in a retreat setting. And so I thought that was really cool. And like insurance, you know, a lot of people don't think about insurance for retreats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because um, I, I thought about that, too. If somebody got hurt inside of a home and tripped and fell and now, you know. And waivers, uh, yeah. you know, if they get hurt, yeah, having them a waiver. I'm actually hosting my first retreat this uh, spring. And so I'm actually going through this process right now and uh, just trying to make sure I have all my bases covered. What kind of retreat? Um, um, it's like just an outdoor retreat. So, um, okay. it's at a state park, 10 minutes from my house. It's outdoors and, um, yeah, it's, I'm pretty excited. And insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then another, a couple things while we're on the retreat thing or any event kind of promotion, make sure you create a Facebook event, make sure you make an event bright link, make sure you go use all the free marketing kind of word, you know, they spread the word for you, Eventbrite and Facebook and stuff like that. So just make sure you're putting your um, event wherever it can be seen. You never know who's going to find it. Yeah, and one random person on Eventbrite. Mm -hmm. And track where your people are coming from too, if you can, um, in a natural way. Like I have forms on my website. Well, 
I'll usually, well, for the retreat, I ask, how did you hear about the retreat? So, yeah. Girl, this is gold. <laughs> I love it. No, platinum. <laughs> All right. Or vibranium. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it vibranium? Yeah. Vibranium. It's vibranium. Holy hell. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go vibranium. Google that word later. Isn't that that is that what it's called? Vibranium? Yeah, yeah. vibranium. Oh, okay. Um yeah. that is a, the Black Panther. That's the ore that they're mining yeah. on the Black Panther, vibranium. Mm -hmm. Then there's antimanium too. <laughs> Who? That's Wolverine. Antimantium. Antimantium. A, it's a sim it's a similar play on it. See, you Wolverine. thought you were a nerd. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All kind of nerds. <laughs> I like to uh, say, like, when I really started to embody, like, this professional me and embody me as a business owner instead of a freelancer, which was a big shift for me, um, I like to say that, you know, my past experiences have given me a sprinkle of organization, strategy, and creativity. So I'm like, you go back to the Zodiacs, I'm a Virgo sun which I used to place a lot of my perfectionisms. I used to blame the Virgo, but now I like to say I'm an evolving Virgo son. <laughs> that, you know, mm, trying to do perfectionism it. past me, but I'm also like a very grounding person. Um, but two, yeah, so. You're on been, here with two Libras and you got a Virgo. I'm a Libra two moon. Virgos. Oh yeah. And he's a Virgo. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got to know the, the top three signs here. <laughs> We really got to get to know each other now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm an Aries rising, a Virgo sun, and a Libra moon. Girl, I got to look. I'm not, I'm not good at that. I just yeah, know I'm a Libra. Okay don't know. <laughs> I'm a Libra. Uh, we have Virgo more Libra sun. energy too. Scorpio. Moon. Terry. <laughs> I'm a Libra. With and I'm an Aquarius moon. I know. And I'm, I'm a Leo moon. Wow. I love how my brain just um, tries to figure you out by that, but I, yeah. I know how I figure you out, but yeah. I love the codes of the Zodiac. It's really, truly helped me navigate. Um, we'll get a deck life. of cards, Jonathan. We're going to like, <laughs> we're going to do a reading. No, <laughs> but yeah, the Jonathan brought up the Zodiacs and it's just, yeah. um, has been like such a um, guide um, on my spiritual journey and connecting to my intuition, really, I guess. And tarot card reading too. Um, my tarot cards actually told me about this week, a couple prior weeks ago. And I just realized it was in the cards a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, okay, but is Ride it like, but then, okay. My human brain's like, or is it the self-fulfilling prophecy? <laughs> yeah. Bit of both. Bit of both. So yeah. But yeah, um, I really like enjoy. I this is like the perfect conversation for this week. Like, definitely needed this. So yeah, enjoy connecting. Yay! Perfect. It's perfect. Perfect for that hump day, right? Yeah. Wednesday. Do you guys you're, have you're, the information you've given us? Is just like amazing, Amber. Thank you. Yeah. That's I I didn't good. realize all the wisdom I had until a couple years ago and I really had to um like shift that mindset that's what I'm saying with any entrepreneur like if you're struggling it's probably the mindset like you got to like work on that and then it opens the door to so much else you know um but yeah do you guys have specific questions on like uh that apply to your situation specifically I asked all of mine I'm ready. I'm like ready for my workbook. I'm just, <laughs> but I know what, mine, mine is going to definitely be a timed release of just wiping away and transitioning into this new thing that I am becoming. So I want to get this random call. Um, uh. <laughs> um, I mean, we're right at the beginning of everything. So everything that you kind of were covering, it was just, it's just right where we are. Right. So, okay. So again, riding the wave. Yeah. Um, These are like champagne bubbles, girl. It's like, yes, yeah. exciting. I love that. <laughs> like, like, and that just, it fills my heart. 
It fills it, my it, heart. It, it really it, does. It, the thing that hit me was the copywriting, um, mm -hmm. really defining, you know, like, well, yeah, I do this and we do this and we do this, but it's like sitting down and just saying, oh, this, you know, like copywriting it and explaining what it is. It's really becomes an important um, tool even as a practitioner to, to have that copywriting because you can, you can, you can talk about it, but when you can present it in, you know, written form, it makes a, a difference. It's like, Oh yeah, darn, I do that. <laughs> so and another thing on that too, is like a lot of people, I used to do the same thing. Everything that I talk about, like it's usually because I went through it or, you know, hopefully have come out on the other side <laughs> of the things, but um, I used to think of writing your website copy as like writing a, you know, a paper for school or something like, no, like copywriting is literally meant good, effective copywriting should be like, like spoken words. So, um, a lot of people get a little confused about that. And it's like, really, no, it's really more simple than that. You don't have to overthink it. It's the analysis paralysis kind of stuff that starts going on that's why I created that workbook too. <laughs> it was like, you need like some kind of guidance and like, just set that intentional time. And if, if you journal already, if you already have a journaling practice, that's basically what it is. You're just journaling, but for your business Perfect. instead of yourself or whatever. But, um, and, uh, so the, yeah, copywriting is more spoken language like it's you should be I always say a good <laughs> I see examples of people reading a good sales page and you can tell when it works because usually a good sales page will have like a couple statements and then it'll have questions like do you suffer from blah 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 or are you struggling with this and you're like yeah yeah that's a good sales page if you're speaking right to them and they're like you know it's literally a journey. You take them on a sales page because um, you can have a short, a short sales page or you can have a long form sales page too. I don't know if you've ever experienced a long sales page where you go on and it's like forever and ever. I try not to make it forever, but that's a longer form sales page is what that is. <clears throat> that that kind of gets on my nerves. It's like, Okay, I'll write yeah. again. It doesn't I'm need to be the meat of it. If it you let you got me on that person. Now, <laughs> you can't find, when yeah. you can't find what you came to the page for. Right. And it's Unless just you really circular, got me circular, on circular pressing this button and you can't get back. Not having that proper menu set up on the side, like not having that and these pages yeah. just kind of go like a maze. It will, yeah. I don't the thing like with the sales pages is when they don't have the navigation menu, it's because that page is meant to keep you on it and to convert and press that button at the end. So it obviously didn't work if you were trying to escape the sales page. So, and I, you know what I don't like, I don't like sometimes those little buttons that pop up on the side and they kind of stay that little sidebar that kind of goes up and down. But I guess a lot of people, when they want when you to do that, side, they want you to give up your name and your, email address or but they have that little bar that follows you with the Facebook and oh yeah that's <clears throat> yeah it's like an effect uh, a website effect I don't like those I like you know if they want the navig they know where that everyone knows where a navigation menu is on a web page <laughs> so there's no need and then you know, at the footer you even have them down there so yeah um, and I don't really like pop-ups because like, I still use them when I need to, but, um, like Squarespace, <clears throat> very easy to use. It literally has the tool built into it and you just put in what you need to put. But then you're like so involved and you get to a page and you're reading it and you're like, yeah, that's interesting. And then pop up, you know, stops you right in your tracks and you're like, man, <laughs> but yeah. And, and the thing is, is like, even if it's not relevant, you know, that pop-up should be popping up at a time that makes it relevant for the people to hop, opt in, you know, the right person. So maybe not your homepage is the best because you're going to get many different types that of people you at stop. your homepage. You yeah. want to stop right there at the homepage and you're like, nah, forget it. 
Because yeah. I wanted to read this article and now you tricked me. <laughs> and then you get pop-ups where you can't find the damn X or how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially mm-hmm. if you're on your phone, you know, it's not very mobile friendly. And you're like, I've had to give up on websites before. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, I can't go any further with this pop-up. But, yeah. The override, the main override, uh, the phone <laughs> Exit this whole page entirely. Yep, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at the chart. How did I get I here? Confused. I was confused. My moon, my moon and my ascendant are in Aquarius. Dang it. Wow. My, my Aquarius, baby. My mom is in Aquarius. I don't mm. want to date an Aquarius. No, <laughs> no you son. are the Aquarius. You don't need another Aquarius. Mm, I got enough. I, I don't know if that's a thing, but I feel like Aquariuses aren't made to be together <laughs> like that's like too. what I it is know. right independence and like talk to each other to death we just talked and talked and talked and i was like ah. <laughs> that, was, that was interesting we talked i love that and we're in aquarius season we're in the aquarius era like yeah. my aquarius baby yeah I'm flowing. I'm a, i remember that um i'm going to a friend's birthday party this um uh, this weekend, and she's an Aquarius sun, mm. and that's how I've learned how to learn more about Aquarius energy. Oh, I'm thinking about everybody's birthday. Like, oh shoot, what day is it? <laughs> I think it explains everything. Like, I love it. I love yeah. it. It just speaks to me. Mm. So, what are some final tips that you got for us, Amber? Hmm. Or some upcoming projects or some things we need to check out. And um, you guys, it's going to be in the description. I'm going to have how to contact Amber, mm-hmm. how to get your life together, how to get your business started. <laughs> that makes me it's feel really so good. Like the foundation of getting your life together. Like, I'm going to. I do- want that. Yeah, I want yeah. them to feel that. Yeah. Because I need to get, I need, what this is for me is some snapback. Snap back. Because <laughs> my little website, it flew out, y'all. When I, those little updates, and I went in there and touched the button, and I was like, okay, I need help. <laughs> it's like, I don't have the, I don't have the RAM. I tell my son, if I try to learn something else, I might, um, I'll forget how to drive. That's another thing. Make sure you ask for help. I even received this message for myself this week through my cards. They always show the truth, always, but, um, I keep getting messages, multiple ones to ask for help. So I want to share that with everyone else that probably is stubborn and not good at asking for help. Thing, right? Because uh, <laughs> I got those messages too. Wow. Because, yeah, there's. I didn't even associate it with the Virgo energy mm-hmm. either. That's, mm-hmm. Makes yep. sense. The perfection. I, yeah, I can do skill. this. I got this. I got. I this. got chills from that. Like, that was bro, powerful. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. It's open. It's open. So what is relatability? It's so funny. Yeah. So I think, um, well, the first best advice I have to give um, is that I heard from someone else that has been an entrepreneur for decades now is never give up. It may seem so simple, but you'll hear that when you really need to hear that. And that's the one thing, after I heard that, I realized that is what, that's how you gain trust to your clientele, is standing, not standing out, but standing your ground and not giving up. I've seen so many entrepreneurs where I start investing my energy and love into them and help, try to help them in their business, and then they give up. And then that, that hurts me. I mean, not like my feelings, but like, I'm just hurt that like they gave up on their business that they were so passionate to build. So, and it happens, it does happen. And so you just have to learn how to be resilient through those hard times and (laughs) it can get hard, but remember Terry, Terry is here to remind you, you have so many possibilities. (laughs) It's getting out of those ruts, getting out of the stagnant energy. So call a friend, get a coach, get a mentor. Like, you know, um, mentorship has helped me so much. And I had a mentor at first, but it really wasn't a mentor. It was an online course selling it as a mentorship. Um, 
So I technically had a mentorship, but no, it was an online course on my early journey. I'm talking about someone truly helping you, you know, the human to human connection, <laughs> not just an online course, but, um, and then, um, you, uh, you are an online course. You are an online <laughs> coach. You are, a co- you are a life yeah, coach. Yeah, that is, a, yeah, that is a good, good thing. It, like, I feel like there's so much, um, I felt this shift before 2020 and then I realized it's coming true after, you know, COVID and stuff. And I saw this shift of like, people are tired of the bullshit. (laughs) People are going to be shifting. I felt this shift and then 2020 happened. And then like, you know, I'm caught up in all that too. And then coming out on the other end a few years later, it's like, wow, everything kind of came to fruition that I kind of suspected. Maybe not in the exact way, but I love it because I am embracing this new future of heart-centered entrepreneurs, of heart-centered business. No more, when I started my marketing journey, I said, there's not going to be any, I'm not working for anywhere I have to be deceptive or I have to lie because marketing is so full of that. So marketing can get a bad rap, but you just got to, you just got to choose the right way, you know? And, um, um, so that's what also why I, I ran from corporate world for a long time too, um, because I knew I was going to end up in a situation where I ha- would have to promote something I am not standing behind. Cincinnati is like corporate nation. There's like so many corporations, uh, homed here in Cincinnati. I didn't even realize, but yeah, so <clears throat> I had to really, um, this is before I even really became spiritual and like really aware of, I've always kind of been aware of what I put on my body, what I put on my body, kind of holistic way of living. Um, and then spirituality just validated that all. So <laughs> it's like, okay, I was literally guiding myself the right way. Um, yeah. And I digress and forgot um, what I was wrapping up about, but yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And uh any special products that you got that you just released? I mean, you, you mentioned them, but I wanted you to end with letting people know, like, I got a special, I got. Yeah. Yeah. So this multi passionate entrepreneur over here. So for the web design and stuff, I have templates. I actually have one template out right now, but I'm going to be going more introverted next month and focusing on more templates. And with the templates, you get access to the Website Mastery Toolkit, which gets all the resources and video tutorials you need to create and launch your own Squarespace website. And then I have VIP days I've started recently where these are good for like smaller scale websites, maybe two or three pages or less. Um, or you need help with design stuff. Um, maybe you need help with, uh, setting up your email or your online course or your membership or any of that kind of stuff. I, I work primarily in Squarespace and Kajabi for the VIP days. I am open to some others, but it just depends on what it is. Um, just because I know I'm efficient in those. And, um, So I have half and full days for those, um, depending on how much work you need. So you can check out those VIP design intensive kind of days. It's not just design. So anything that's like techie or design or any kind of online business related. Is this something where someone's like you're having this day where they're they're in your class? I am your no, no class. I am their, their designer for the day. I am like, oh. my day is catered to working on their project. Now I have a framework for this to where I have um, some prep work before that and stuff. But the actual scheduled VIP day is like me. I start at 10 a.m. Eastern time, wrap up at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'll hand over all the deliverables and stuff. Um, I usually should be able to know if I can finish it all in one day. If not, I'll provide you like a summary of where to go and you can either, you know, finish it up on your own or hire me for like another half day. I usually leave the next day open in case we don't get things finished, but I usually have a pretty good scope of what I can get done in a day. So 
Um, I usually don't have that issue. So I take the next day to just rest. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I've been starting those uh, the past month and I've really been liking that because you just get it. It's like turnkey, you know, like no more drawing out this little website project for weeks and weeks when it can be done in a better process. Okay. And then I have my custom design and branding. So the Essence Unveiled experience, this is more for like higher end custom, like you want your website exactly what you vision in your head. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm applying all the uh, code, the customizations to get exactly where you want it. Whereas the VIP days, you might be a little limited, but not, not too limited, but definitely more limited than the custom design experience. Like so I had VIP day is like when they pay Chris, um, what's his name? Rihanna's ex-boyfriend. What's his name? Chris Brown. When they say they give him a thousand dollars to take a picture and they can hug him all they want. And they're like, you get to be with Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I provide so, so much more value for you. It's so much more <laughs> valuable than paying a thousand dollars to hug Chris, whatever his name is, Chris yeah. Brown. Brown. So, That's amazing. Brown. I didn't even know that. I thought that was so funny. I just saw the pictures and I was like, wow, you got a thousand dollars for that? I might have to take that and like, I feel like that'd be like a good social media post. Like, yeah, it's you hilarious. pay this to get that, but you can pay this and get me. Get me. You can get me. I'm Amber. <laughs> you gotta show that self love. Value for the money. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I'm getting, I have some projects booked up for that now. So if anybody watching this and wants to do it soon, um, I'm going to be right, raising my prices because I'm getting better at this process and providing more value each project that I do. So I am going to be raising my VIP day price soon. Um, right now it's at 888 and uh, for a half day it's 555, 555. And um, Get and you don't have to really done. work. I guide you through the whole process. You don't have to worry about any of that. But if you're looking for more, like you're ready to really like up level and invest, like this is good for people that have been in business for a quite few years and can afford this because this is a um, really a high end, in, higher investment. So my um, branding and what custom web design experiences are usually. If you need a custom website only, you already have your branding, that usually costs, um, starts at the 2000 level, but then the branding is what the higher tier pricing is for. So mm -hmm. um, with that, you get the custom website, but also you get a custom logo, you get a whole brand book that I send you at the end that has not only your brand visuals, but your story and your brand strategy and like all the things. So you remember that website workbook I told you about? Mm -hmm. I have a brand workbook that covers like your mm -hmm. messaging. This gets to like the heart, um, the brand workbook does. Now, some of those prompts are in the workbook of the website because they're important and need to be there. But um, the branding is where I really have fun with like um, just getting, we get your story. We get um, your passions, what you value because your values in your business are very, very important um, because that's what's going to be bringing in the clients, um, not your services, but your what you value. And also you, you know, trusting you as a person too. Um, but the values is really what it comes down to. And that I know this because I was serving clients that didn't have the same values as me. And that was clearly the problem then. So I've learned this firsthand when um, you don't really tie in your values with your business. So yeah, it's really like that mind, body, spirit connection, but in a business setting, <laughs> you know, um, which I actually call your brand, your brand spirit. So your brand spirit consists, I didn't finish that earlier, your story, your visuals, your aesthetic, and then your brand strategy. And you put that all together and I call that your brand spirit. It's like its own spirit, you know, its own. Because I mean, yeah, if, even if you're a personal brand, like even if you're a personal brand, you are you and your business is its own 
kind of energetic mm. container, you yeah. know? Yeah. Sounds amazing. I'm like, get off of here so we can get the workbook. I'm trying to get the workbook. Like, <laughs> all right. This was a wonderful day. We're wrapping up. Remember to like and subscribe and share. You know people that need this information. You need to share it. Hit the like button. Do not trip, y'all. We need some likes up in here and some comments. Tell us how useful this was. Um, how wonderful it was. Did it make you feel bubbly and excited about your business? And we will see you next time. All right. Bye. Take care.